Um, we also watched 65. So I, I was very tempted when I saw the trailer for this thing. I was like, yes. I got very, most excited, most hype. So pumped that to know that this was coming down the pike. Uh, described as, uh, I, I'd never played it, but Turok? Dino Hunter? I think that's what it's called. Turok game. Series of first-person shooter video games based on the comic book character, the same name, set in a primitive world inhabited by dinosaurs and other creatures. Yeah, so it's kind of like Turok. Um meets Jurassic Park, sort of. And it's PG-13. It's it's a quick movie, hour and 33 minutes. Some would say maybe too quick. Even so, with that runtime, it's like the choices that they made in terms of, well, you, you there was so much, like my brother-in-law said it, like that went by fast. It almost went by a little too fast. But then it had these moments where it was like too slow. It's like, why did we focus on these very slow sequences or moments when there's so much more to explore? Um, so I think that's what ultimately was its undoing. And I don't know. I I, I don't. I, Adam Driver, you would think he has the chops to kind of carry an action movie and even be possibly even be an action movie star. I mean, the dude used to be a Marine. So like and he knows how to handle weaponry. And he's a bigish dude, right? I think he's, I don't know how big he is, but he seems like he's a big, tall dude, imposing. He's got the face. Like, he's got all the tools that you would think you would need to be the, that kind of action star. And uh, they kind of went the After Earth route, which did not, I was, you know, I mean, it was, it's After Earth meets Jurassic Park, essentially, you know, in After Earth. Will Smith crash lands with his son. They have to, you know, get through this wild terrain. Um, and, you know, they find out it's Earth. So I feel like they took that concept and then they were like, and let's just add dinosaurs. Um, so if you're not familiar, it's it's an astronaut crash lands on a mysterious planet, only to discover he's not alone. Um, and the tagline is 65 million years ago, prehistoric Earth had a visitor, which they also put text on screen in the movie in case you missed that tagline. In case you were wondering what the 65 was in the title, they made it very blatantly clear. Like what I was confused by is like there was that one of the openings, I think it was the opening scene where they have the text on screen. It says before the advent of humankind for the advent of mankind or something like that, uh, but something explored the heavens and it was just like, so are these not humans? What's going on here? Because they look like humans. Like Adam Driver looks like a human, but he comes from a planet called Samaris or something like that, um, where they have uh, pretty cool waves, pretty cool beach, um, and advanced technology. But I remember watching this trailer and I was guys, I just got so friggin' psyched. And I think that uh, if it had, it did not have a, a big budget. It had a budget of like six. Uh, I don't even think it was $60 million. I think that's how much it made at the box office, but I think the budget was like more like $30, $35 million. And I would imagine given that it's really only three actors with speaking lines, four actors with speaking lines, it's like Adam Driver's a dad. He's got the, his daughter, the mother, and then the kid he he finds on the spaceship that crashes that he was piloting. So I think a lot of that money went to making sure the dinosaurs look good, and they did for the most part. Like I, I watched an episode of Prehistoric Planet last night, and I think that Prehistoric Planet, the 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 special effects, visual effects, the graphics on that are like top notch. And I, I'm wondering why, and I'm, I think I know the reason or the answer why why the movies can't seem to get that down. Like how's whatever Prehistoric Planet's got going on, whatever secret they got underneath their sleeve. Like share it with the world so we can have you know better looking dinos on screen. Uh, <clears throat> but you know overall, it just felt like they really it was more of a just a father daughter story. I mean, it's a survival story, right? Like it's it's based in survival. Um, but uh, there in terms of action, like I think you know people and uh people were craving more action and thought it would be it would just be him just going around just like shooting dinosaurs left and right and, and just non-stop you know but it was a lot of quiet moments a lot of slow moments you know he has a daughter and he's taking he's going on this two-year mission to take this passenger ship to wherever um ends up getting running into an unexpected asteroid meteor meteor field 
which uh, damages the plane and causes it to crash on this planet, which turns out to be Earth 65 million years ago. Whoa, how's your mind blown? Cool. And uh, you come to find out, I guess the about halfway through the movie, it's usually when the like the, the twist happens or one of the twists, something unexpected. You know, he all the passengers on the ship died except for this one, one girl. Which before he discovers the girl, like it it is crazy how quick he goes from uh he does he like doesn't even give the thought of trying to survive on this planet like any chance. <laughs> it was just like. He went from recording a message, right? He records the message, basically detailing like no survivors, uh, location unknown, you know, I guess don't send help. And then he re-records it. And I think it's a little more straightforward and professional, not as bleak. And then the next scene, he's like about to blow his head off. It's just like, wait, what? What? We are, we're already committing suit. We're already killing ourselves. We're already giving up. We're already giving up. Cool. Like that felt a little <laughs> like, oh, bo, 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 bo. Hey, we're uh, pump the brakes, homie. It's not all bad. And so then he eventually discovers this girl who doesn't speak English. English isn't her fir first language, but she's around the same age or maybe younger than her his daughter. And so the, the girl takes interest in him and the daughter and keeps playing all these, uh, I guess what you call video tapes, cassettes, whatever kind of technology that was. They look like um, like miniature floppy disks or hard disks, and they would play either holograms or videos, and that's when um, you find out that the daughter died, and it's like the big <gasps> moment. So I guess him just immediately turning to suicide is like a little more believable, knowing that his daughter died, or that did he know the daughter had died at that point? I don't know. It's like you still have a wife, unless the, what happened there. So I think that like they there's so much more that they could have played with or done with the characters and um yeah I don't know and I think that it's a it's like a byproduct or side effect of not having enough budget because I think if you give this if you're saying like Adam Driver just takes on dinosaurs um for two hours and you just have more obstacles more challenges more setbacks maybe this maybe this is uh you know. I think people are, are more apt to like it. Instead, it's like you get some interesting interactions between the two. Um, you know, it, he basically uses a tactic that he uses with his daughter to help the, the girl, like getting her good graces with the blowing and the, the hands to make the whistle, which I've never been able to do. Oh, can't do it. Where she does the, she does the other kind of whistle where it's like the, the pinkies. Like, I can't do that either. Um, but I know the people who can do that do it a lot. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to do that every single opportunity I can get. I thought the creatures look good. The dinosaurs look good. I think they look better on Prehistoric Planet. But I was looking, I was specifically looking for like flaws or like this is just the flash level CGI. <laughs> And I thought it passed the test for the most part. I thought they did a pretty decent job, especially at the at the very end with the geyser and the T-Rex. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. So as they're trying to make their way to the escape shuttle um, where, you know, Adam Driver says the kid's parents are when he knows damn well they did. They did. They did. They uh, also he also finds out that there's like a, there's a, fat a fatalistic imminent collision impending with the humongous asteroid that basically wipes out the dinosaurs what i'm what i'm interested about with the asteroid is i know it's big and i think i remember someone saying that it's it is the size of texas basically and that's big to take out all life on earth though and all the dinosaurs is it because the radiation from it just basically pollutes the entire earth all right i guess i buy that but if you don't have that aspect of it and it's just like it just hits the earth, how does that cause like in my head, I'm thinking, OK, tidal waves, earthquakes, like it's going to disrupt some shit, but like kill all life, life killer at that size in this economy. So that that was kind of threw me off. But I guess uh, I need to I need to bone up on my history, bro. Pun intended. Um, you know, I did. I dug. I dug that final scene. I did like that where they're, they're basically like it, it, they're teasing you saying like they're so close to escaping and getting in this in this shuttle and then they get hit by an asteroid. They fall off unconscious. And then, of course, the T-Rex makes a, a nice reappearance 
or the like there's two t-rexes i think it's like you, you gotta you gotta have a feeling that that's gonna be the final opponent final boss um and to have her i think she saved his life a couple times remember she saves his life in the quicksand with the tree oh that scene where she's running away from the mini raptor or whatever and he had given her like a a little baggie of grenades the grenades are like this little smaller than golf balls i'd say but for her to capture the t the little mini raptor in that log which was like very smart very genius but then to dump all the grenades in there it's like yeah i get it you want to make sure he's dead but let's like go one by one let's just test one first she dumped all the grenades in there. Me and my brother-in-law were like, oh my God, I can't believe she just did that. But yet again, she's like eight or nine. What do you, what do you expect? Oh, a Phasolosicus, Phasolosicus. Because they kept calling it a T-Rex. I'm like, that's not a T-Rex. This T-Rex had long ass arms, dude. And it was, it was basically like running around on all fours. So I was like, okay, we're 65 million years ago, but yet like this is, they have the gen genetically modified dinosaurs that you would see in Jurassic World. What? It's like, no, 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 that's an actual dinosaur, and it's not a T-Rex. A fossil, a fossilosuchus. That's where the geyser, I didn't, and fun fact, I didn't know geysers were that hot. Shit, dude. The geyser tore the friggin' skin off that, uh, off that damn fossilosuchus. So, um, oh god, the scene where they're camping out for the night, and he sets up, like, those, almost, like, those things that look like flares to that basically are sensors that can sense the proximity of someone coming towards them or whatever. But there there's the part where she's like foaming at the mouth and you're like, Whoa, what did she get bit by a rabid dino or something that we didn't know about? And he's like immediately goes into action mode to try and save her. And you know, the initial thought that we both had was like, Oh, she ate the poison berries that she picked. Like even after the, even after he told her, like, do not eat. This does not go into your stomach. Uh, not good. Like she went ahead and ate the goddamn poison berries. And it's like no. He opens up her mouth, and there's some kind of ugh, nasty bug inside. And I don't know why I thought this, but like I was like, oh snap! So he's gonna lure out the bug with either food or fire. I feel like to maybe. I don't know. I think I would think that fire they would shoo away from it, but sometimes I don't know. They drawn to the heat or the light. I don't know. No, he, he uses a razor blade and just like dangles it over the bug, and the bug comes up for it, and then that's when he kills it. I was like, oh, what? Like bugs are into cutlery? News to me, dude. And then geysers being that hot, I I would not have thought that. Thank God I never went to Yosemite. <laughs> Because I would have been like, I would have been like, you know, those, uh, the dancing magical water fountains at, at Epcot Center or Disney World, where it's like, it kind of just whoop, bloop, bloop, it shoots streams from there to there. And you, you like, as a kid, you just stand in it and you stand on it and you're like, hey, I'm blocking it. <laughs> I would have done that with the geyser and I would have clean lost half my face along with my body. So, and my soul. Decent movie, but it's like the premise, ugh. Not well received by critics, I'll say that. And I think the audiences were more forgiving. Um, it's crazy to think that Adam Driver, I think he got his start on Girls, the HBO so, uh, series. He's a former Marine. This is the first time in an Adam Driver's film career where he utilizes his weapons training from his old career. I don't know if that's true or false. It doesn't seem like it's true. But I guess, yeah, because you're thinking about Kylo Ren, lightsabers, like he wasn't trained on lightsabers, I don't think. So uh, I hope that this is a nice stepping stone for Adam Driver to be an action star. I think the only thing holding him back is that there were a lot of things in this movie that didn't scream action star. He definitely brought, and I think that's a product of, okay, he's a dad. And so he had this girl, his dadness kicks in. And so that's part of why um, there are moments where it's like, I don't see him as an action star. Um, but maybe this is like the new kind of action star. I don't know. I just think he could be an action star, but he just didn't pull it off in this movie. But I can see it. It's right there. Um, 35% of critics gave it a favorable review, a positive review with an average rating of 40. 
4.8 out of 10. Yowza. So the co consensus is sodden sci-fi that somehow finds a way to bungle Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. 65 is closer to zero. Boom, roasted, dude. Metacritic, which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 40 out of 100. So it's, yeah, 40 out of 100, 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10, based on 27 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. Audiences served by Cinema Score gave the film an average grade of C plus on an A plus to F scale, and Post Track gave it an overall fifty four percent positive score, with thirty cent for saying they would recommend the film. I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't not recommend the film. I just think they could have done it a whole lot better. And it's like it was the recipe for success was there. It was there. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I would have liked to see more of the technology, but they did. They did. They didn't flaunt it, but they did showcase the technology a fair amount. And maybe this is a case of like, if it were successful, they could they could um, reveal a lot more stuff in the sequel sequels, because they left a lot on the table in this movie. Where it's like, wait, why do y'all exist? What is Planet Samaras? What like? There's a lot of questions about that went completely unanswered in the movie like humans exist are you humans are you just are you just look like humans how did the planet samaras come to be there's not a lot of details around that and like um i was fully expecting like them to do some clever thing at the end where it's like they escape but they left something behind that didn't get destroyed by the the dinos that by the asteroid and so somehow that leads to mankind happening on earth like mankind wouldn't have ha basically I, I was thought okay mankind is not going to happen if it weren't for this visitor who's a human so it's like humans wouldn't have happened if this visitor hadn't come i thought that was where it was going and it, I, I don't not it doesn't seem that way <laughs> i just thought there would be a clever little aha at the end like oh so this is why we have mankind adam driver's astronaut ace so i don't know i'd recommend the film you got nothing else going on. I, I wish there were a little bit more dinosaurs. Um, you know, I think that my brother-in-law was like, where are the freaking creatures? Where are the dinosaurs? And I think that's okay. The, the it's, it's like that, the Jaws approach where it's like, we're not going to show the, the big bad creature. Um, we're going to hint at it. We're going to tease it, see a glimpse of it. The soundtrack will change. Like you get all the, it's the anticipation, building that antis, anticipation of like, what's it going to look like? What's going to be like? And like, you know, that dread that comes along with it. I'm fine with that. I guess I was just hoping for a little more peril and danger instead of like, we're in a cave and we have to get through this cave and the tunnel and there's rocks. And I don't know. Just felt like that. It'd be nice if it was a bit more that way. So, uh, yeah, it's 65. Mm -hmm. So close. But it's good to know that I think there's plenty of, uh, I don't think this means that you don't do dinosaur movies. I just think it's a good premise. I just, yeah. Mm. 